the easiest way to attack it for me would be from up here do this bolt this bolt right there and then there's a bolt underneath it right there but before we do any of that I gotta take out my oil filter there's tons of access for it right now with the subframe dropped but you can do this job from up top as well uh, there's enough space to get your hands through here so I'll film it now just to show you what's involved and hopefully it helps some people out there okay guys I've got tons of access here because of my cell frame removed so now let's start taking the bolts off it's 13 mil bolts okay, there's first one okay there's the second one now it's easier to get that bolt from up top now for the third one it's supposed to be here now the oil housing is free to come off and there's got a lot of oil coming down with it so be ready to catch that mess and I'm gonna also undo the lines for my oil cooler while I'm at it because I need to change the gasket on my oil cooler as well seems to be the whole lot is leaking okay guys to undo the oil cooler lines it's much easier to do it with the fender removed you can just get straight in grab the clamps and just pull them back off and then there's the second one okay and now we can just pull these off Okay, one line's off. Now the second one. Here comes the second one. Alright guys, there we go. Now the mess is off, now we're free to go. Okay guys, this is one of the messiest jobs on this car so far. And one of the more important ones too because these tend to leak on all the BMWs a lot this sucker can come down now alright guys there you go if you're changing oil filter housing make sure you change the oil cooler gasket as well the both unit comes down together then you can just take it out and work on it on the side Okay guys, so now the unit is off and you can see the the seal has turned from rubber to plastic with going over the heat cycles. There's not a whole lot left in it. Super flat and that's where all the leaks are coming from. So we're going to chop that away. Clean this up and put a new seal on. While we're doing this, we're also going to start taking apart the oil cooler. These are T30 bolts. Four of them. Okay, so now that the surface is all clean, we're just gonna Put the new seal on it, gasket. So it goes in, lines up. These little tabs just 
hold the gasket in. Make sure it sits perfectly. So that's ready to go. Let's take this under the car and put it on there. Let's put the bottom one on first. So it stays there. And then we can put the top one and then try the third. Try to line up the third one slowly. I'm not putting too much torque on these now, guys. I just want to make sure that I apply the correct torque. Alright guys, so the torque specs for these bolts is 18 foot-pounds or 25 newton meters, which is not a whole lot. So tighten them to their specs. Okay, two. And the third one's right there. go oil filter housings on and we'll do the oil cooler a bit later okay guys so that's a 22 mil spanner all right so now the old hoses are off oh. and we're keeping one on just to remember which one goes where so first we're gonna do the high pressure one and this is a new part that I bought, take off all these bits, put new washers and hose clamps on. So put that in there. Now actually let's put the banjo, banjo bolt and crush washer. So it needs two crush washers back in the front. one's on now we can try putting the hose clamp on top all right guys so now the return line is on there already a new one so we're just gonna put a new clamp at the bottom put the top one on as well Okay, I would like to say just put this on, but this thing was a beast to put on, guys. So when you put it on, be ready for some screaming. The hose is a very tight fit, the high pressure hose. And now we're gonna put the other hose back on. I try to connect the return hose first, and it didn't really go very well. Because there's slightly weird offset. So now, both the hoses are on, we can clamp it, and then put the fluid in the system. And dropping the subframe is the easiest way to replace your power steering hoses, guys. Once you tighten these hose clamps, you're good to go. Okay guys, okay. so now we got the, the subframe sitting on the motorcycle jack, and to lift it up, we're just guiding the power steering fluid through the cavity there and we're gonna try and connect it at the back side first okay one bolt in okay two in Okay guys, so now we've secured a couple of bolts loosely at the back so the subframe don't, doesn't drop on us. And in the meantime, there's enough space here to get your hand through there and put in the power steering power connector. This is the one for that. 
put that on. Okay, so that's for the fan. Okay. For the power steering cooling fan. Yeah. And now, while we're at it, we're just gonna put our drive shaft in too. Yeah, put the drive shaft in. Can you see? What are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Can I help you? Okay. You just jiggle the, turn the shaft to get in the alignment of the... Yeah. The... Gotta make sure your carrier bearings actually placed in the right spot, guys. Okay, guys, so we got the drive shafts lined up, both of them in the gearbox. We're gonna start filling up the transmission now. And before we do that, I'm just gonna start tightening up my carrier bearing bolts. And then after these two things are done, we'll pull up the subframe. Okay. okay guys, I looked up the specs and my chart shows it to be 50 foot-pounds, so that's what I'm going to go with. Okay guys, so now I've attached the subframe. I decided to just finish everything at the bottom and then just leave the water pump and flange, all that other stuff to be done once I get the parts. So for now to put the subframe back together, before I did that, I actually filled up my transmission right through there. I just used a big syringe that's right there. That just did the trick for me. Comes with a big hose attached to it at the front. So I got that done. Then I connected all the connectors through there. They're supposed to be your power steering pump uh, connections. You put those through and then make sure your carrier bearing bolts are all uh, all tor torqued up. Your drive shafts are all in. Once all these little bits are done, then we can move on to torquing the subframe bolts which I'm going to do right now. The torque specs for these are 74 foot pounds. And then just go for it. Okay. I just decided to do the further in ones first guys and then go towards the front. Okay. Oh, this thing is not even filming the correct spot. In a second, this is the bolt that I just torqued now, guys. Now we move on to those ones under the frame there. And for that, you're gonna need a super long extension to get to that. I've got roughly about a foot and a half long extension. Okay, there we go. All right, that one's done as well. And I think that's about it for torquing the subframe bolts. After torquing the subframe bolts, you can put in your engine mount. All right, guys, so now my washers have finally showed up or the o-rings so now we're gonna put the flange and the water pump the supercharger all back together this is the original mini part that i ordered it's totally fine for it to be not flat in case you're wondering and then just put it on and i also acquired the o-ring for the crank sensor or the speed sensor so we'll replace that one too but right now we're gonna mount this loose I'll actually set the camera here so I can film it all. Yeah, the Mini's been down for over a week now, which was supposed to be a quick project, but it turned into a longer one. From changing the clutch to every single seal that leaks and servicing the supercharger. 
The hoses, yes, there were hoses that were leaking for the power steering. That got changed too. So it was it was quite a bit of work. But oh yes, one more thing. Just clean the surface as much as possible, the best you can. And the mating surface as well has to be all smooth so the seal sits on properly. And then don't make it too tight because if you tighten it up now, you're gonna have problems lining up the water pump. See, it still moves. We'll be able to use longer extensions and tighten it up in a minute. I changed the water pump as well to a new one. So there's no potential problems in the future. All right guys, so put some silicone grease on this seal here because this one sometimes also gets cut. All right, so now, it's time to line up the beast. Okay guys, so now we're starting to line it all up. The water pumps seated in the oh, flange. Yeah, that, yeah, now that O-ring is in. Yeah. Just push it in. Just in this vacuum line and just go straight in, push it down and then push it in okay lines on okay guys so so far we've got that hose connected we're gonna start tightening these bolts up now i hold the supercharger on the pump is mounted on we can tighten the flange bolts as well now Okay guys, so now we're gonna torque the supercharger bolts. And the small ones, M8s are 18 foot-pounds and the M10s are 33 foot-pounds. Okay, now torque those sneaky ones in there. Okay, torque these two bolts inside. Now everything's mounted on properly. One of the most common oil leaks on this block is this seal here, guys. Change this, see how flat and tight it is. Yeah. There's no way it's gonna stop the oil from running out under high pressure. All right, guys, new O-rings on it. And now we're just gonna put it on. Okay, guys, so now we've tightened all the important bolts that are mounting these things. And now we can go on about tightening this one here. The dipstick tube is tightened. And now we can put in the intake elbow. I've put in a new gasket on there because I don't know how old the old gasket was. And we're also gonna start putting on the, the two vacuum lines that go on there, just line them up, put this on. Just make sure it's lined up properly, guys. You don't want leaks anywhere in your system. Push the red tabs down so you can slide in the vacuum lines. So you just gotta push down on the red tab and put in the vacuum line into it. Okay, next step would be to see about this hose here. Okay, now we're just trying to figure out which hoses go where. So this one goes down to the bottom of the coolant, the, sorry, the radiator. This one comes from thermostat to the top. All right, guys, so now we've cleaned that bit up for the oil cooler. And we're gonna try and get it all set from here in this gap by the wheel well. Gotta double check to see the seals are sitting properly there. Okay, now we're just gonna tighten these bolts. Finally, they're in, in their spots. Tighten them. 
crisscross pattern. Okay, now it's time to connect the hoses. Once they're on, it's just a matter of getting the clamps on. And then it's done. Okay guys, all the repair work on the Mini Cooper is all done now. The car's been put back together. I've upgraded a few things on it. I got the Anki lightweight racing rims. Got them for cheap. And this is what the car looks like and how it sits right now. After all that work. on the clutch I've upgraded the intake pipe and threw a hot air intake on it and changed the spark plug leads put new spark plugs on it and it's running really good not a drop of oil leaking sits well next up is going to be that little thing there maybe a 15% pulley I want it to be reliable I also fixed the air conditioning on it wasn't working at first I thought it's a shot compressor but it turned out to be just a faulty clutch. So once I changed the clutch air conditioning has been running perfectly good. So that's how she sits. I'll take it out for a spin so you guys can see how it actually performs after the clutch replacement. Okay guys now I've driven the car for about 1100 kilometers and done the brake in process for the new clutch and the flywheel and the clutch pedal feel is really nice the old shot clutch was really heavy this one feels firm but really good to drive in stop and go traffic I work downtown so the traffic situation sometimes gets horrible and this clutch pedal feel is not hard on your legs like if you're stuck in stop and go traffic for 30 minutes it's easy to Deal with. I didn't have to bleed the clutch afterwards either I just had to drive it for a day and then it firmed up initially it was a, a little bit on the soft side but as I put more and more K's on it it just got perfect very happy with this uh, with this big job that I performed and with the mini ownership so far I'm just gonna do a little uphill pull just for fun to hear the hot air intake that I put on just for the supercharger noises and thanks for watching please subscribe if you haven't i would appreciate it